Well, welcome everyone uh, to uh, Multilingualism Research in Southern California. Uh, this is a conference that is intended to be a start of new collaborations among all of us. Uh, and the program, as you've seen, is what we think is a cross-disciplinary sampling of basic and applied approaches to dual language experience. This conference has been inspired and organized around the launch of Bilingualism Matters at UCR, which we did yesterday with the very wonderful uh, guidance of Antonella Saracci, who's been here from University of Edinburgh with us. Um, I want to make a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, Emily, do you want to make an announcement for the graduate students and postdocs who are here? Here she comes. Good morning, everyone. I'd just like to make an announcement for the graduate students and the postdocs and anyone who's doing a poster presentation. There is a social hour afterwards um, for our group. So um, we're at Lake Alice. <laughs> we will be at Lake Alice. Um, if you need a ride there, you can sign up at the table at the front. Um, we have cars going over. Um, it's also a pretty cheap uh, lift ride over if you need that. Um, there'll be appetizers, um, soda, iced tea, and it'll be a really good time just to chat amongst ourselves. Thanks. Right. Thank you. OK, a couple of other announcements. Um, we have posters outside today. And unlike the ordinary uh, conference arrangement, the posters are not assigned to a particular time, but rather they will be posted all day long. And so the idea is that when we have coffee breaks, when we have lunch, uh, you can go out and talk to everyone uh, and at your leisure, and the students can then make their way out there uh, during, during the day. And we encourage that discussion. Um, the talks today, we have a very, I feel like the person at the, on the plane who says that we have a full flight and you need to check your bag before we go. So we have a very full program. Um, and the full program is really one that, that is full because of the optimism and, and excitement we have about uh, creating uh, this, this research network. Um, so the talks are scheduled for 15 minutes with five minutes for questions. If speakers go over, we'll probably hold questions until later. But given that we're all going to be here together all day, we think that it, there should be much, you know, no, no problem having opportunities to talk to one another. Um, OK, uh, a couple of other things. First, I can get this. Oh, this isn't. Uh, okay, there are some, there are always technical problems when you. Uh, I'm running this from Dropbox and it doesn't seem to want to forward. Okay, so we have, we have a technical problem that we didn't know about, but I will, we'll fix it. I'll put it on my, I'll, I'll download it. Um, OK, we, we will. I have to say, this is a week where I've had technical difficulties every single day. And in class, I don't know why this is not working. OK, this seems OK. Um, so I can't see it that way, but you can. A gigantic thank you to the Center for Ideas and Society here at UCR. Um, they have been with us throughout this entire project. They've provided support at every, at every, every step of the way. Um, all of the organization you, you see, really, the thank you is to them. Um, and we are very, very appreciative. Um, to, to support from the College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences here at UCR, and to the Departments of Comparative Literature and Languages, uh, Department of Hispanic Studies, and, and Department of Psychology. Um, I also just want to acknowledge all of the group who have worked together to organize this. Uh, COVA, Aldemar Prieto, and I have co are co-directing this new branch of Bilingualism Matters and have organized this together with a wonderful advisory board, including including uh, Chris Chiarello, uh, Liz Davis. Um, I saw Hai Jin Na here somewhere. 
uh, and Vrinda uh, Chidibaram. And uh, we are, we've been working together on this, and again, from a cross-disciplinary perspective that we, uh, we, we really cherish, because we think this is going to bring this together in the best possible way. I'd like to invite Dean Millie Pena, who's the Dean of the College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, uh, to say a few words. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Uh, buenos dias, uh, bienvenidas y bienvenidos. Uh, good morning, welcome. Uh, I have the privilege of being the dean of a college that, as its banner, uh, it has uh, an emphasis on the fact that we describe ourselves as an interdisciplinary college. And what a better example than what my colleagues have been able to pull together uh, with this conference. And so I'm really grateful to the work that they've done, especially um, Judy, who had the vision, uh, and also the, um, I would say, chutzpah, to come to my office and uh, invite me to uh, be part of a partnership of this wonderful um, opportunity. Uh, I gave a different welcome yesterday. Um, I describe myself as trilingual. I speak Spanish, English, and Spanglish. Mi abuela decía, del otro lado de la puerta hablan inglés, de este lado de la puerta hablan español. On the other side of the door you speak English, on this side of the door you speak Spanish. I am eternally grateful to her and my family for, um, as I said yesterday, which we didn't realize at the time, uh, would be uh, providing some incredible benefits to my brain to help it uh, be able to preserve itself from future um, memory loss. <laughs> so thank you also to my colleagues in psychology who've been doing all the research to uh, help those of us who grew up uh, bilingual to now be able to look at our past, maybe try to visit some of those old teachers that told us, uh, uh, please stop speaking that other language. You're uh, supposed to only be speaking English so that I can go back and say, who knew? Uh, anyway, este, eh, estoy muy agradecida que ustedes han participado en esta conferencia. I'm very grateful that you've all come to participate um, in this conference. Y uh, les deseo un día um, eh, bien interesante y intelectual para el intercambio de, de ideas. I wish you a, a wonderful good day and uh, um, a great opportunity for tremendous uh, exchange of ideas. So gracias y bienvenidos. Adiós. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about why bilingualism matters in Southern California. Until recently, uh, many of the fields we work in didn't recognize the fact that more people in the world are bilingual than not. Uh, bilinguals were considered, certainly in psychology, to be a very special population of speakers, uh, ones who complicated our study of language and linguistics, uh, ones who were a problem. And what we now know, and certainly Antonella has, has uh, sung uh, this uh, song to us uh, yesterday, um, is that there's a great deal of mythology about bilingualism. And that what's happened in the last two decades is that there has been a new attitude, a new realization that not only is bilingualism not a complication, but bilingualism is normal. Uh, and in fact, that uh, the language and learning sciences have come to see that bilingualism is a tool. It's a lens for revealing the workings of language, the mind, and the brain. Now, this is a, uh, these are graphs of publications and citation data from uh, Web of Science. And what we see is that there has been a virtual explosion of research on bilingualism. And these are just searches for the topic of bilingualism on the graph on the left, and then on the right what you have are a graph of the citations of that work. And what you see is that this is just 
taking off. You, you can't, and I have to say that 10 years ago, if someone said to me, do you feel on top of your field? Do you feel like you, you could tell me what the latest discoveries were in your field? I would be very cocky about it and just say, absolutely. Um, and now I feel a little bit like that old I Love Lucy where she puts too many suds in the dishwasher and you wake up every morning and it's sort of overflowing with wonderful bubbles. And um, you know, there, there is just research coming out now on every single aspect of bilingualism that is almost impossible to keep up with. Um, we read a lot in the press, and, and Millie just uh, uh, told us that, that she has great hopes that bilingualism is going to protect her. Um, that we see, we read a lot, and we hear a lot about the benefits of bilingualism. Antonella talked a lot yesterday about both the benefits of bilingualism and the care that we need to take uh, in thinking about whether some of those benefits may have been exaggerated or maybe we need to understand the context in which they uh, arise. Um, but it's very clear that bilingualism is now on the radar. And what does this uh, research show us? What are the questions that we want to ask, those of us who are uh, cognitive psychologists, cognitive neuroscientists, psycholinguists, that we've been asking questions like, are children really confused by exposure to more than one language? Um, are there benefits in learning a second language? And if so, do those benefits depend upon the age at which you begin to study that language? Um, is there a benefit or is there an effect of being immersed in the second language and culture? And how does that potentially benefit learning? Uh, and does study abroad, does immersion in another language change your mind and brain? Is bilingualism different for young infants and for adults? And is bilingualism a benefit for old age, something that everyone in the room, no matter how young you are now, may be hoping for? So we also hear a lot, in addition to the research, we hear a lot about the politics of bilingualism. Um, and this is just uh, from last year's election. So as everyone here in California knows, uh, we had Proposition 58 on the ballot. And despite the tremendous disappointment that most of us felt at the moment of the election, there was a whopping success. Um, and this, this uh, Proposition 58 passed by a very, very significant margin. And what this does is it basically opens up dual language education in a way that it had been quite shut down uh, since the previous uh, ruling in, in, in 1998. Now, the question and how to relate that to the research is really crucial because we have all these new developments. We saw that very rapid rise of research. And now the question is, how do we best inform others about these research findings? And how do we, as Antonella said, this has to go both ways, how do we as researchers take advantage of what's happening in schools, what's happening in, in real language education to understand how we should be shaping our research programs? The American Academy of Arts and Sciences last year published a very interesting document. Uh, they, they were commissioned. Uh, there was a, a commission for uh, language learning uh, in the 21st century. Uh, and the kinds of things that uh, were noted that, and, and again, we heard some of this yesterday, uh, is that um, English is no longer sufficient as a lingua franca. Um, and that in fact, and this is, um, Antonella talked to us yesterday about in the context of bilingualism matters about the world in general. This is focused on the US and the situation in the US, making a call for why it is that we need to have more effective language learning, language teaching, and why bilingualism matters in the, in the US. There are some very interesting uh, reports that are part of that larger commission worth reading. And I have to say that it was that commission was initially a bipartisan request on the part of Congress. And so I like to think that it would still be possible for it to be bipartisan. I'm not quite sure. OK. Here at UCR, UCR is a diverse and multilingual campus, um, as is the community of Riverside. So bilingualism absolutely matters here. Um, I'm teaching a class, uh, undergraduate class, this term of 150 students, the first day of class. I asked, how many of you speak a language other than English? Every single person 
raise their hand. So we here need to really be thinking about what this means for our students and what it means for their work and what it means for their lives. Um, bilingualism also matters globally. And in the diversity of language and culture that we have here at UCR, we also need to be thinking about training students who are going to go out into the world and experience other versions of that diversity um, and how that is going to relate to their uh, future plans uh, in, in their work. Uh, and one of the things that we've been doing is that we have a, a higher grant from NSF. It's Julie, where's Julie? Julie Ducius, my colleague uh, from Penn State, and many of you know I came to UCR a year ago from Penn State. Um, Julie is the PI on this grant at Penn State, and we have a sub-award of the grant here at UCR. And what this grant does, it's a mouthful, Partnerships for International Research and Education. What this does is it trains undergraduate and graduate students to do research on learning broadly, on language learning, on bilingualism, and take it to our domestic and uh, foreign partners to be able to have experiences where they are immersed abroad, but doing conducting research in another culture, in another context. Um, and so this is another opportunity to be able to extend that diversity uh, more, more broadly. We actually have a number of Pyre partners here with us. So Antonella is a Pyre partner at University of Edinburgh. Um, I think Melissa, Melissa is here. Um, maybe you can get her attention for a minute. Melissa is from Gallaudet University. One of our domestic partners is at Gallaudet University, um, which I think, as most of you know, is really the premier university in uh, the United States um, for deaf students. Uh, so we were, we were really pleased to be including everyone in this program. Uh, and what this does is to look at changes in language use and language learning across the lifespan uh, using a range of very different methods. Some of them are neuroscience methods, some of them are behavioral methods, field methods, uh, and, and really going into classrooms, into the field, and into contexts where the form and use of language uh, may be different. And in all of this, we need to counter the mythology about bilingualism in this country. Uh, and abroad, and that's why bilingualism matters here. So today we have a series of talks that sample, and they really are a sampling, and I apologize that we're, it's going to feel a little bit rushed and a little bit like bilingualism Sesame Street. Um, but we, we, we want to do this purposely in this way to try to cast a wide net and to open discussion that will allow us to then develop future collaborations, future meetings um, across our, uh, our area. So we see this not as a single event, but really as a, a beginning. So welcome. <laughs> 